After enjoying perfect vision, 35 years after initial cataract surgery and eyeball implantation done here, this nice gentleman presented with sudden onset of blurry vision and diplopia. Obviously, he had a subluxated lens with round people and uh, extremely clear media. The technique used at that time was extra capsular cataract surgery with eyeball implantation. Two MVR entries were made at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock and temporal tunnel is created. Translimbal starting from sclera without a separate congenital incision going across limbus and adjacent cornea. The 2.8 millimeter is enlarged to 6 millimeter to facilitate removal of PMMA lens. You can see the four positional holes there. And uh, lo, the inferior haptic is not to be seen. Those days it was made of uh, proline sutures. And uh, see that it's missing. Only the stump inside the PMMA is there, but outside it's missing. On wide dialer exploration of the non dilating pupil, it was found in the inferior retro iris space. It was extracted using a forceps. Remnants of capsule was seen. There is no vitreous flaws or hyaluronal phase disturbance. The remnant was removed along with the haptic. A iris claw lens is implanted with its concavity anteriorly so that the optic stands behind the iris and pupil. There is already an iridectomy so there is no need to do another iridectomy. Lens is held at the optic haptic junction, migrated to the retro iris space and with a 27 gauge cannula it is enclaved two times so that much of the iris tissue is held in between that. Similar procedure in the superior haptic. See that the pupil is around 3 mm and circular so that the post-operative elongation of the pupil does not occur. Then you see the round pupil of optimal size. This pupil does not dilate beyond this. AC is formed, visco is removed. There was no need for vitrectomy as there is no loss of hyaloidal space. AC is formed again through the side port and intracameral moxifloxacillin was infused. Eyes kept open and eye drops were started. Patient had wonderful vision post operatively. I presume that in such complex situations, fixation of such an eye well behind the iris is the least invasive procedure, sparing vitrectomy, sparing involvement of vitreous space, sparing the ciliary body zone and sclera, and the lens remains intraocular throughout. And uh, the surgery was done under topical anesthesia with supplementation with 1% lignocaine injected intracamerally. Thank you.